What if I told you there is a tool in Git that can help keep your history clean, make beautiful commits, and make you stand out amongst your peers for Git cleanliness and professionalism? That tool is Git Add Patch. I love the flexibility of this tool, and personally, I haven't found a comparable option in any of the GUI clients I've tried before. And trust me, I've tried a lot. So let me show you how I, a developer of 10 plus years, make clean, concise commits that are easy to follow and understand using Git Add Patch. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Part of being a great software developer is knowing your tools well. When I use Git in the command line, I feel like a master craftsman. I'm using very specific tools to the fullest extent possible. And in doing so, I'm making my work beautiful. And as a developer, I think part of beautiful work is having clean and well thought out Git commit history. If you're working on a feature and you're committing code, you wanna make sure everyone has the context and thought behind the work you're committing. So now let's go over a quick example of how we can use Git add patch to break up large commits into smaller, more understandable commits. Here we have a project for my neovim.files. We can see when we run git status that we have a bunch of changes. And if we run git diff, we can see that all these changes pertain to different things. It wouldn't make sense to make this big blob of changes one commit. If another developer were to look at this commit, they wouldn't understand what the intent was here. So let's break this up into smaller commits that make more sense and give us a nice clean git history. So let's start by running git add patch. Now what happens with git add patch is it will guide you through a wizard going through each hunk that git sees as a change in its repository. And at each hunk of changes, git add patch is gonna ask you if you wanna stage that commit, change it, or not stage it at all. Now we can see here the first hunk that git add patch gets to is a change where we add color scheme Lua to our color scheme plugin config file. And this is a good start, so let's stage this hunk and look for other changes in this commit that deal with adding the color scheme Dracula. The next hunk is changing the plugin config LSP config require statement below all the other things. I don't really care about that. So let's say no. Then we see that we're doing some LSP saga configuration. Let's say no to those. And then finally, we see another one with Lua line. We change our theme to Dracula from Groovebox, except that. And then in our Packer file, we can see that we add Dracula as a Packer dependency. So let's add that as well. And then we're done. If we take a look at the staged commits, we can see that we are only adding the lines where Dracula occurs. So now we can create a new commit and have a nice helpful message for it. So now to continue breaking down this commit, let's run git add patch again. The first commit we see is the thing where we move our LSP configuration requirement underneath other things. I don't really care about that again. And then we come across some configuration for LSP Saga. So let's create a commit now for all of the things that deal with the configuration for LSP Saga. We will stage this first hunk and we will stage the other hunks that deal with the LSP setups. Next, we come across a hunk that adds Vim Fugitive to Packer. We don't care about that. We also don't care about Copilot, but we do care about LSP Saga. Now this puts us in an interesting position because LSP Saga and Copilot.Vim are in the same hunk. So now let's edit this hunk. Editing a hunk will bring you into a new buffer with some helpful text. Now we only care about the LSP saga lines here. So let's just delete the lines that deal with adding copilot and save this buffer. Now, if we look at our staged file diff, we can see that within this diff, we are adding only LSP saga in our Packer file. We have successfully staged a partial hunk. Now, if we run git diff and check out the files that have yet to be staged, we can see that GitHub copilot is still in there. Nice. So now we write another helpful message saying that we added LSP saga to our NVIM configuration and we move on to the next commit. Running git add patch again and skipping through that first hunk because we don't really care about it, we come across T Pope's Vim Fugitive. We like this addition to the Packer file, so let's stage this commit and move forward. We don't care about Copilot in this commit, so let's not stage that hunk. And then we write a new commit message for adding Vim Fugitive. And then we do the same thing for GitHub Copilot and the other hunk that moves the LSP configuration to a different spot. And so now if we check our history, we can see that we have now broken this large spiraling commit into a bunch of small commits, four to be exact. And each one of these commits has a corresponding commit message that helps anyone understand what was going on 
in this series of commits. And this is what I'm talking about. If we just committed all of these hunks of changes as one large commit with a whole bunch of bullet points or some other garbage, any other developer coming into your project would look at this and not understand which thing you were trying to change at any given point in time. It is, in my opinion, far more professional to have small atomic commits that explain very well what you're doing at each step of the process. And the other thing I find professional is using Git Bisect. So if you want, check out this video here to check out Git Bisect.